So when our puffs come out of the oven, this is what they're gonna look like. We have a row of swan bodies and you can see the ridges, the lines left from the star tip. That gives them a little bit of uh, length. We have our puffs right here, nice and round. And we have our eclairs, all about four inches long, all the same size, except for this guy. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and touch him because we're not gonna use him. Remember him? He's the dog bone. That's exactly what happens when you pipe any variation into that eclair. It changes its shape. And that's not what I want on my tray. I want them all to look the same. So that'll be family meal right there. Nothing wrong with that. Since I am gonna be working with product that's going to be used for human consumption and it's not going to be further processed, I'm gonna snap on some gloves. That's the rule. So we definitely wanna follow that rule. I wanna go ahead and get my shoe prepared. I'm gonna split my cream puffs and my swan bodies using a serrated knife. For cream puffs, I'm going to take the top off at about the one third mark. Now, if you notice your shoe doesn't have a really good base, and this happens a lot more on the swan bodies, you can take your knife and you can shave a little bit from the bottom just to give them a little more secure base. That can be helpful so that they're not roly poly. If these are, uh, these are rounded, again, I can shave it just slightly to help smooth that out. It gives me a little bit more of a base. But right here, I just want to take my serrated knife and cut a third of the top off. I'm going to leave two of them with the top on, and I'll give you an alternate way to fill, finish those. Now, once you've opened it up, we talk about shoe being uh, physically leavened. You can see this is all hollow in here. There's a little bit of soft, rawish dough. We can pick that out. It's usually not too much, so we don't have to worry too much about it, but it's a good idea to go ahead and pick that out. I keep the caps with the bases. So again, pick out the excess. What we can put in these, sky's the limit. Put a little chicken salad in there, a little tuna salad, a little crab salad. It'd be a savory application or we can make a pastry application. We can put some whipped cream in there. We can put a little chocolate mousse in there. It's all up to you and what your application is. These, I'm gonna pipe full of pastry cream and I'm gonna dip the ends in chocolate. So they're gonna be similar to our eclairs. Those don't take any pre-preparation. So we'll just put those off to the side. Now my swans, once again, they do require preparation. For this, I wanna cut substantially more off the top. I wanna to cut the top two thirds off of the swan bodies. Okay, and open them up. And again, I like to keep my swan, uh, my tops and my bottoms together. You don't have to, no one will notice, but it just keeps everything size wise the same. So we cut the top off, we find the back side, that point that we put on the swan bodies. We cut the top off and separate them. Let me do one more, and then we'll cut the wings in half. This one's a little bit round on the bottom. You can't really see it as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and trim that just a little bit to smooth that out. Give it a little bit more sturdy base. I don't want them rolling around when I'm trying to move them. Cutting the top two thirds off. Again, pick out any excess dough that's left over in there, and there's not much, just a little bit. Now, for my wings, I'm gonna cut the tops in half. So take the top, hold it narrow end to tall end, and just split it in half, gently with your serrated knife. Narrow end to big end, cutting the length or cutting along the same lines that were created by the flutes in the star tip. We cut those lines. And we create two wings. Okay, so now we're prepared. We have our puffs ready to go, our swans ready to make, and our eclairs ready to fill. Uh, these we'll use for another purpose. Uh, pat a shoe, if you're going to start, store it long term, it's a good idea to put it in a bag or a box and stick it in the freezer. It'll last a very long time. You can make it in large quantities ahead of time, pull it out when you need it, throw it in the oven, take the stale off, put a little crust back on it, and it's ready to go. It stores very, very well in the freezer. It's so simple and basic. Now, I have an extruder tip on my pastry bag. Okay, sometimes we use a tabletop extruder. Uh, but I'm going to use this pastry bag loaded with pastry cream, okay, and it's got that extruder tip. And so what I need to do, and you might notice also that I put a, a twist tie on the end of my bag just to keep it from backing out. Now this extruder tip is tapered so that it will make a, a, a puncture into the side of the eclair. And you want to push that in as far as you can, and you want to squeeze. 
until you feel the weight of the eclair change. That's really what you have to judge, and you can't tell much about what's going on inside that eclair other than if it starts to squeeze out. Now, if that happens, and I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you that's probably going to happen to you, let it go and let it stop on its own. We'll come back and clean that up here in a minute. To make sure that doesn't happen in the future, what you can do is let the, the, cream, or the eclair kind of dangle. And as it gets heavy, it'll pull itself down so that it'll slide down the tip a little bit. And again, judge the weight. If a little bit comes out of the end, we'll deal with that in a minute. Now also, another trick you may want to use, especially as your bag gets a little bit empty, is to twist it off. It's hard to use your thumb to hold that cream back to not allow that cream to slide forward or slide between your thumb and your finger and back into the, uh, the rest of the bag. Puncture, squeeze, nice filling of, a, of cream. Oh, that one I didn't, got a little too full. And one more. If your shell is too hard, you can set this down. You can do it on the table okay, and use your fingers to help push the tip into the eclair. If it just keeps folding back, just set your bag down and then you can slide the tip in and then squeeze it from here and it'll fill the same way. But you have to be careful not to overfill. Now, once I get done, I'm just going to take my finger and I'm going to clean off any excess cream. Hold, please. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. So we cleaned off the ends of our eclairs and they're ready to dip. We've got our chocolate setting up uh, and I'll get that momentarily. Now while I've got my bag of cream, I'm going to put just a little bit of cream in the base for the swans. This gives them a little weight and a little bit of varied texture. Ultimately I'm going to use the whipped cream or better cream um, to finish, but the pastry cream gives them a nice uh, bit of uh, uh, difference in texture and in flavor. Also, I said I would fill some of these like an eclair. The method is the same. Just simply push the end in and squeeze it until you know you've got enough in there and you know you've got enough when you can feel the noticeable weight change. And again, if you get a little bit of cream on the bottom, just clean it off with your finger. All right, now I'm going to switch to the pastry bag with the whipped cream. Okay, and for the cream puff, all I'm going to do is squeeze it down in and then circle as I come out. Squeeze it down in and circle as I come out. And when I put the top on, I want to see that cream squeeze out just a little bit. You're going to sell that cream as much as you're going to sell that shell, so you want to be able to see what's in there. Okay, so that's the cream puff, and I'm almost done with those. Let me go ahead and finish the swan really quick. So I want to uh, figure out where the back of the swan is, and I'm going to pipe that same shell pattern, that squeeze, pull, release on the back in two passes to create the breast of the swan. So again, find the back of the swan, put the shell tip at a 45 degree angle, squeeze, pull, release, squeeze, pull, release, and taper it back to the tail. And you create the look of the swan's breast and tail. Okay just like that. And then the wings can go in. Now the wings, I'll give you three different ways you can put those on. Traditionally, we just tuck them into the side and flare them back. You can also have them up. As the swan moves through the water, often their wings will be up in the air. Okay. Alternatively, before takeoff, they'll flare their wings out, and I like the look of that. So turn the wings outward like this. And I'll do that again here, because again, that's my favorite shape. I think it looks great when you do that, and it really captures the powdered sugar we're going to put, put on ultimately. So I'm going to gather these up in the center of my tray. I'm going to powdered sugar these now. And to do that, I'm going to use a sifter. Okay. 
put a little sugar in. And I don't like to shake the sifter. I prefer to wrap the sifter with a tool. I want to make sure that it doesn't look like an accident. It looks like I'm meant to do that. So you want to put on a decent amount. That's also because some of it's going to blow off and some of it's going to melt into the cream and the shoe. So hit it pretty heavy with the powdered sugar. This is just regular old 10x powdered sugar. Okay. Now my swan is almost done, but I need heads and necks and I have those here. So I'm going to take these heads and necks and each swan is going to get a head of its own. Just take the two and push it back into the cream until the neck buries into the cream. So that would go back here. And that gives it a little bit of stability, keeps it rigid. And those are the heads and necks. Then I have my chocolate that I'm going to dip my eclairs in. This is simply chocolate ganache, equal parts of heavy cream and uh, semi-sweet chocolate. Um, melted together. It creates a nice smooth, smooth mixture. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to take the end of my thermometer and I'm going to get the tip of it just slightly in the chocolate and I'm going to pipe an eye on there. Just a little mark of an eye. Makes them look a little less, I don't know, haunted. Make sure it's even, same shape on either side. Do them all up. Not too big, but you want to make it, again, not look like an accident. And since I'm finishing some product, I'll go ahead and start my presentation of them. So I can move my cream puffs off onto my display board. I can move my swans. Actually, I think I'll wait on my swans so I can put my eclairs on there as well. Okay. Now my chocolate, it's very important that I have the right texture, the right consistency of my chocolate. If it's too thin, it's going to run down the sides of the eclair. If it's too thick, it's not going to adhere to the top of the, uh, the eclair. So you got to play around with this. You got to find the right consistency. This is in pretty good shape. It could be just a little bit tighter, a little bit colder. And if you need it to be, you can always put this over an ice water bath, 50-50 ice and water to cool it down a little more rapidly. Now I'm going to take my eclair. I'm going to grab the bottom, again, using my gloved hands, because this is finished product, and I'm going to dip it down into the chocolate about one-third of the way, and then pull up and away. Okay? If you miss a little bit, if you don't get a good coating, you can always go back and do another one. Let it drip just a little bit, okay? and that creates a nice, smooth, shiny chocolate top. Again, we're going to take the eclair, we're going to dip it down, and then draw it up, and that's going to create a little bit of suction to pull that chocolate off so that you get a nice smooth finish on there. Let it drain a little bit. Again, if it were a little bit stiffer, it wouldn't drip quite as much. Last one. And again, if you have a ridge, sometimes you'll notice you have to go back for a second pass because it won't fill the ridge in the top of the uh, eclair perfectly. So you may have to go back and do just a little bit more. Okay, and that'll be enough of that. So then I can prepare my platter with my eclairs. Very careful. 
and then I'm gonna not touch my swans with my chocolatey fingers. I can move some of them, hold them by the base. That pastry cream does a great job of keeping that swan stable at the base. And I'll put three of those on my board. And that's a nice little pastry tray. These are all made with patashu. This is just touching the surface of patashu. There's a lot of other things you can make with this. Uh, you can make Paris breast, you can make Gâteau Saint-Honoré, Croquembouche. There are a lot of great things that come out of this preparation. Um, Dauphine potatoes on the culinary side. Also, you can fill your puffs with savory fillings, say a salmon mousse uh, or other types of filling. Uh, it's a great carrier. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunity here, and it's, again, one of those preparations that if you'll just take the time to perfect it, I think you'll find some really good outcomes from it.